Okay, so here we are with review time. Um, I have a, in my lap here a Shanks CC number no. 7 by Gibson, 2013 uh, Les Paul, 1960. It is a aged uh, copy of the one that reportedly was was in the possession of John Shanks, the famous producer. Um, I heard that it's now no longer in his possession. It's owned by a private collector. I don't know how true that is. But uh, there's a headstock with the Grovers. Um, and the headstock up front. I know it's a little out of focus, but what the hell. And uh, what I can say about this guitar is it is a it is a beast of a player, for sure. Um, it allows me to transmit... Uh, what I'm feeling in, as far as notes onto the fingerboard, which is what a guitar should be. Um, it doesn't argue with me. It doesn't have uh, an attitude to say, you know what, you're not going to play this the way your brain is thinking. It lets you, in fact, it surprises you with some different sounds that you didn't know were there. So it's kind of like a learning curve in a way. Um, but uh, they hit the ball out of the park with this guy. Um, the frets are, the frets are, smooth they feel they feel good you know the neck is 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 age and it's not subtle it's it's somebody took a hammer to it <laughs> the back is done really well um, I gotta say one thing for Gibson's uh, in-house aging is they're doing an okay job now um, in, in direct comparison to Kim's work um, Kim's work is is infinitely superior um, in in the finish coating and in the detail attention to detail because when I got this guitar the knobs weren't aged um, uh, the pickup rings were brand new this was brand new this switch tip is a 1960s switch tip but uh, this was brand new uh, the truss rod cover was like right out of the right out of the package I had to age this myself come on Gibson what's up um, you know a few other little tidbits that I felt needed a little bit more attention to the detail. Uh, otherwise, uh, they didn't. They did an awesome job. Um, it is razor blade. Um, it's not cold checked, and that's evidenced by the fact that there are razor blade marks. You can't see them in this camera, but you can see where the checking goes, and you can see where there's a cut uh, under the finish where they because they checked it or cut it and then removed it, and you can see where the blades are. So that's kind of to me, it's a mistake. It shouldn't be there. There's like four maybe five of these areas one on the neck um, the wood doesn't crack that way so these are not for those who who asked I saw a couple questions they are not cold checked these are uh, these are definitely razor bladed uh, but they did a nice job I mean they did a really great job in the way this is done here and the way this is done there's like little stop holes to stop a crack like I don't know if some of you metal workers might know but um, gosh I'm gonna keep hitting that um, these are aged bell because the other ones are real bright and shiny. I put throwback covers on it that I aged myself. Um, so um, anyway, it, it, it sounds pretty amazing. I really like uh, this guitar. It has a different feel to it. Um, then the others, I like necks that are really fat um, and, and they fill this large hand of mine. Um, and this one is that 59 profile because in 1960 and early 1960 they must have had some had some necks that were left over uh, from 59 and into the 60s and uh, they necked these 1960 models with that 59 neck um, so it's referred to as a traditional or not traditional a transitional uh, Les Paul for the period and uh, John Shanks got one and everybody wants it now <laughs> So Gibson did their did their magic, and I did. They did a good job. Um, they did a good job. It's not a Brazilian fretboard. Feels good. It's not Brazilian. I'm gonna do a um, I'm gonna do a demo with uh, some volume knob stuff because that's real uh, real evident with this guitar. They did a good job in these pots too. I still have the bees in it. So here we go. Yeah. 
secret to this guitar is these uh, custom buckers they put in there. Um, I mean it's some really great wood and it, and, it, and it feels good in my hands. It's heavy. It's you know this thing weighs 9.5 almost. It's almost 10 pounds. It's the heaviest guitar I have. That might be due to the Grovers. Uh, a word about the Grovers. They're not the USA ones. They're the uh, Asian ones. And I spend more time on these Grovers tuning this thing than I like. Um, the historic machine heads are better by far. I can set them and forget them most of the time. Um, but with these, um, they're, not only are they heavy on this end, um, but the, what I believe is the myth uh, that they stay in tune better, I think, it's, I think it's wrong. Unless maybe you get the USA ones, which I might get an age set and throw it on there and see. Uh, but right now, I, I don't really like the ones Gibson use. I, I fiddle with them a lot. I had to do a lot of tuning before this video. This is number 101. Um, everything's always for sale, but this is not an advertisement for the sale. I did a little aging on it. Um, I did a little aging on these. I did a little aging on this. Uh, today, I'm probably going to age these little... What do you call them? And um, I darkened the these because they were really bright and shiny and they might show up that way here but 
they were like bone bone white not bone white they were like pearlescent white and they didn't look right with the rest of the aging of the guitar which was one of my biggest complaints is uh, these were new um, this was new these were new switch tip was new this is a 1960 switch tip and the truss rod cover was brand new I mean what what okay so it kind of threw me a little bit so I, uh, I I did my own little bit of aging you guys can tear it apart or like it or love it or not I don't care the guitar plays great I've been playing it in band it's become my main guitar um, the band members love it and uh, that and the plexi this would be the epitome of tone this and a 68 plexi is is all I need and a good cabinet which I don't have yet so um, a word about the red things um, I want to demonstrate this real quick I got a minute on the, on the video I don't like to change these so these are from beer bottle uh, Grolsch um, not an advertisement for the beer um, although it is good but these are the bottle cap washers and no you can't go get these at the at the uh, at the hardware store because they're the wrong size but anyway what you do is you take your strap um, the, right, the right side of it anyway and you stick it on your thing and you have a potential for disaster here without some kind of restraining device and this little fastener which was a washer fits nicely over that and this is for those who don't know most of you already know and look at that now we got something that isn't going to fall I can I can trust it uh, you gotta keep an eye on it because this motion too much of that and you could loosen it fits so well that you could loosen this screw by this motion which already happened on another guitar, but it didn't fall. But anyway, that's it. That's my review. I hope you guys really like this guitar. Um, and if you have uh, any inclination to go out and get one, because uh, they're going to make no more than 300, and this is 101, so I'm sure they're out there, and they'll be done. Uh, best Les Paul I've ever had, and I'll probably keep it for life. For life! Okay, guys, take it easy. Bye.